Good morning, Trinity family. It's Thursday, and it's the last day of April. So in God's providence, I'm in the last chapter of Romans today, chapter 16. And I've been taken this morning just by that simple word, welcome. Paul mentions it a number of times. We're all anticipating getting back. I mean, we're hastening the day. And one of the things, I know this goes without saying, but one of the things we will do is welcome one another. And uh, there are certain ways to welcome, and there's actually listed some things here of ways that we are not to welcome one another. It's, it's kind of funny when you think about physically, we Southerners enjoy uh, the handshake and the side hug. And, you know, Paul talks about the holy kiss. I don't think with social distancing, we're going to see a lot of that. But spiritually speaking, I mean, there's there is a way to welcome and there's a way not to welcome. And I mentioned this, these verses in chapter 15 yesterday. I encourage you to read it two, three times and to pray for the church. It's also some really good verses for married couples. This would be something good to memorize and think about in your marriage. Uh, chapter 15, beginning in verse five says, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. I mean, again, it just makes you very excited about getting back together as a church with one voice glorifying God. Picture us in the sanctuary singing and praying together. Well, immediately in chapter 16, in the first verse, he draws our attention to a woman named Phoebe, and he encourages the church in Rome to welcome her. He says, I commend our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church, and it says that you may welcome her in the Lord, and then it says, in a way worthy of the saints, and help her in whatever she may need from you, for she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. He goes on to list, I don't know, roughly 28 people in the next 14 or so verses. And he's very big on workers in the church, servants in the church. If you go through and read this, he'll talk nine times about in the Lord, in the Lord, or my beloved, my beloved. But this Phoebe is the first one, and he talks about welcoming her and when it says, in a manner worthy of the saints, well, then obviously there's a way to welcome somebody that's not worthy, that is not Christ-like, that doesn't, uh, doesn't point people to Christ or is the Christian way of welcoming someone. So he encourages them, do it. Now, I think in the, in the uh, negative way or the way that we're not, he does mention later um, at the end, of, well, the middle of chapter 16, that there are going to be those who try to cause divisions. They create obstacles. It looks to me like, um, now I'm not trying to make too much of this in the welcoming, take it out of context or anything, but these people who are described as people with smooth talk and flattery, and they deceive others, they deceive people who are naive, and um, he actually talks about avoiding such people so that might give sort of the, the opposite of the way that we would come back to church. We want to come back in Christ, in unity, welcoming one another. So I would encourage us that the, the manner that is worthy is to welcome other people in the way that Christ has welcomed you. That's something we can try to even do now. We can pray and ask God, how can I welcome someone in the same way, in the same manner, that Jesus Christ has welcomed me, unworthy me. I don't deserve it. And so we look at each other that way, and we, we look forward to welcome one another. Again, one voice, glorifying God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I was encouraged by that this morning, to think about getting back together and welcoming. Also, this morning, before we pray, uh, and I'm going to encourage you to pray for our missionaries um, for the remaining weeks of uh, shelter in place. And uh, Todd had shared with me uh, the original of uh, Lift High the Cross, one of our favorite hymns, missionary hymn for us. The, the refrain, you're well 
um, acquainted with, lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. I do hope when we're back together again and we're welcoming one another, we're going to welcome our missionaries into our lives, into our prayer lives, and um, pick up where we left off in our missions effort. But there was one stanza in particular. It says, let every race and every language tell of him who saves our souls from death and hell. And again, that, that stanza is not in our current hymnal, um, but that's powerful. And so what I want to encourage you to do, everybody in the church, each family has the booklet, 2414, and to start during uh, shelter in place to read up on this and to use it as a prayer guide to pray for our missionaries. And so today we will tell you, we have also mentioned here the focus areas and then other missionaries and benevolences that we'll support. So today we'll emphasize, we'll pray for uh, Greg and Julianne Allen who are with the Rujak people. It's not really their real name uh, for the sake of protecting them. But we're, we're very committed to helping them in the translation of the Bible into the Rujak language. People that are translating the Bible into the Rujak language are being converted. It's amazing. There are amazing stories coming out of our missionaries that we support with the Rujak people. So be encouraged. Just, just, I got to quit talking. My time is already too much, but they're starting at Genesis 1-1 and the translators are questioning who is this God and they're literally being converted. Um, it's very exciting. So let's pray for our day, pray for one another and, um, and we'll pray for the, the uh, Allens. Father, we pray uh, yet another day, if I'm not mistaken, this is day 100 uh, in this coronavirus in the United States. So will you help us, God? Will you strengthen us? Will you give us time to reflect? Will you uh, give us time in the word? Will you teach us how to pray? We ask the Holy Spirit to Teach us how to pray and pray for us according to the will of the Father. We pray for a welcoming of one another in our homes, that families would welcome one another as Jesus Christ has welcomed us. We do pray upon our return to church that there'll be a lot of love, a lot of expressions of missing one another, seeing each other's faces, singing together, glorifying you with one voice. But do, Father, teach Trinity Church how to welcome in a manner worthy of Christians. Father, today we welcome into our prayer lives Greg and Julianne, and we pray that you help them and their team uh, We know the Allens have been on the front lines. They have been in some scary places. And now you have them among these people, this people group. We pray for the translators. We pray those who are going to be given the word of God in their own language, this unreached people group, are going to hear it for the first time. God, please let this happen quickly. Save your elect. Save those for whom Christ has died in that country among these, this people group. Help uh, the Allens, again, help their team. Give them encouragement day in, day out. Uh, such hard work, tedious translation. So please, please help our dear friends whom we love, the Allens. So God, go with us today, we pray. Uh, give us the Holy Spirit. Give us the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, we just ask for grace as we do so many mornings, grace and mercy and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, God bless your day today.